God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church, and I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our service today. We're going to open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Thank you for bringing us together and for allowing us to use social media as our platform to spread your word in power and in truth. We welcome the Holy Spirit into our service today to speak to the hearts of all those that are viewing this video or listening to the audio portion. Father God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, that we may have life and life in abundance. Yes. So as we go into the service today, yes. we pray that you lead us and guide us. Yes. Give me the words to speak, yes. the words of refreshing, yes. the words of conviction yes, to those that are listening to this message or viewing this message. Yes. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, as we pray, Amen. Mm -hmm. Our message title today is The Enemy. And in parentheses, I have external and internal. I will be reading from the letter of James, chapter 4, and verse 4, which reads firstly from the King James Version. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now the God's Word version renders it. You unfaithful people, don't you know that love for this evil world is hatred toward God? Whoever wants to be a friend of this world is an enemy of God. My beloved, there are unfaithful people in the world. Those that care nothing about the truth of the Word of God, care nothing about God and holiness, care nothing about Jesus Christ. Don't you know that love for this evil world is hatred toward God? Yes, it is, because you can only serve one master. It will either be God or the world. And you have that choice to make. My beloved, the main problem confronting every Christian in sanctification is further proof that sanctification is progressing. Every believer in Christ struggles against sin and temptation, and this fact requires no argument. All of us, because we are in this life, face temptation. No matter how strong a Christian you feel you are, you are continually being bombarded by the temptations of this world. And every believer, I don't care whether he is a pastor, some high-ranking person in a church, or a member of a church, he is subject to the temptation of the enemy, who is Satan. And experience proves it. It is not insignificant that we in this modern day experience it more and more. And it is a picture of the battle for sanctification that every Christian experiences every day. We are bombarded by temptation from TV, radio, internet. We are bombarded with temptation. My beloved, because sanctification is not a single 
perfect act of making us as Christians holy one for all. Simply living in this world means that we are surrounded by temptations, all of us. There is no one that is free from temptation. Did not Satan attempt to tempt Jesus Christ? When he was in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights? Yes. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane? Yes. All through the Bible, we see examples of godly men, the great heroes of faith, falling and falling. My beloved, so as Christians, we have to face it every day. Every Christian is in a battle for holiness and sanctification. The problem for sanctification is that we cannot avoid encountering the enemy, external or internal. In any war, identifying the enemy is essential. The great battle for sanctification rages on two fronts, the external and the internal. So let's talk about the external enemy. The Bible is very clear that there are two principal enemies that assault the believer who is a true Christian. From the outside, that's the world and Satan. As our main scripture says, James 4 and 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So, my beloved, you are in a constant battle for your holiness. For your witness for Jesus Christ. The world is watching you. As a Christian, the world has its eyes on you, waiting for you to fall, to rip you up, to speak against God, to curse God. But don't you know this, that in the end, they will. I mean, the ones that accuse the Christians, the ones that come against the Christians, will answer to God at the great white throne judgment. Let's look at what Romans 2 and 2 has to say. Because we want to understand that you cannot have one foot in and one foot out. You unfaithful people, don't you know that love for this evil world is hatred toward God? Whoever wants to be a friend of this world is an enemy of God. And Paul is saying the same thing in Romans 2 and 2. As Christians, we are not to be conformed to this world. So we have James 4 and 4 and Romans 2 and 2 agreeing with one another. We cannot afford, as Christians, to fall to the lies of Satan. In no way can we allow our reputations to fall. In no way can we allow our testimony for Jesus Christ to be put in a bad light because we fall to the world. Yes, here is one difference I want to bring to you. When a Christian makes a mistake or falls, he can repent and be in good standing with God through Christ. The lost person, it doesn't make any difference unless that person receives Christ as their Savior and Lord because they're going to hell anyway. But the Christian, once the Christian receives Christ as a Savior and Lord, they are saved permanently 
That's the difference. One will still go to heaven. The other one will go to hell. The word world in our verse refers not to this planet we live on, but it refers to the organizational orders, viewpoints, systems, and philosophies of the inhabitants of this plan scheme that Satan uses against the sacred order of the Almighty God. Satan has a plan. You see, he doesn't have to worry about the loss because he already has them. But he wants to ruin the testimony of every Christian. That includes me. That includes you if you are a Christian. His main goal is to discredit the work of Jesus Christ on Calvary. I think up how foolish it is for Christians who are destined to eternal glory to be consumed with and taken in by an anti-God, an anti-Christ system that is doomed to destruction. How could any conscious, spiritual, living Christian yield itself to the world? And we're not saying that Christians don't fall, but to live a lifestyle that is in agreement with the world system will not be tolerated by Jesus Christ. There will be a day of judgment for rewards for every Christian. And the said Christian will be either in the black or the red. You as a Christian, where do you desire to be? Do you want blessings from God? Do you want rewards from God? Or you want him to remove them from you. Although your soul will be saved, you will not have a reward. There are many Christians who are tolerating abortion, homosexuality, gay marriage, incest, and pornography, along with catering to evil rulers and government. How could this be? How could this be? Well, what they are doing is quenching the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. They are putting the blame on everybody else or saying everybody else is doing it when they are right in line with what these people are doing. They vote for people that they know are abortionists are involved in homosexual relationships, are in incest and continually looking at pornography. They vote for these people. That is the sin that God hates and will not tolerate. Following this path leading along the Broadway is a path that goes to hell. My beloved, the wide road is easy to travel down because if you're driving down a wide country road, you can go lane to lane to lane and you may not see a car for miles and miles. But if there is construction on the road and the lane is blocked off and says, left lane closed. You have to stay in that right lane or you're doomed to be in an accident and hurt someone or be hurt yourself. So what road are you on today? That straight and narrow road or that wide road that leads to disaster?
The problem is that for now, the Broadway, with all its attractions, is still in plain sight as believers walk the narrow way. And therefore, the temptation is always present to go the way of the world. You know, a lot of times, Christians say, well, what will it hurt if I just do this one time? If I just commit adultery one time, no one will know. If I just look at pornography one time, or if I commit sin and the person becomes pregnant, what is abortion just one time? I'm going to tell you what it is. It is sin. It is direct sin against God. And God does not blink. He does not close his eyes at sin. God has not changed. If he rained down fire on Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, what do you think he will do today? The world is in for a rude awakening. My beloved, now is not the time to fall short if you are a Christian on your faith in Jesus Christ. There are so many things in the world that can grab hold of us. We are surrounded and frequently ambushed and all, often subdued by sin. Therefore, my beloved, we must be on constant guard and be sober, which means be alert. It is encouraging beyond words to know that our Savior Jesus Christ has prayed for us already that we will not fall. And you can read that in John chapter 17, verses 15 and 16. Because we cannot walk in this world without being surrounded by unclean and evil things that potentially defile us and rob us of our enjoyment in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, as we walk, we must be vigilant in avoiding whatever would render us unclean. Fortunately, my beloved, in the Old Testament, there was always an appropriate sacrifice to restore cleanness. And there still is. That's the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. And that cleansing blood cleanses us from all sin. That's 1 John chapter 1 and verse 17. When we as Christians sin, we have an advocate with a father. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Who died on Calvary. Who shed his blood on Calvary. That we may have life and life in abundance. What are you focusing on today? Are you focusing on God? Are you focusing on cleanness? What are your priorities today? Are you focusing on the external world or the internal world? I'm talking to you as a Christian. If you are focusing on the internal, you can focus on the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and His promises. If you are focusing on the external, you are focusing on the things that are ungodly, the things of this world. And the things of this world will drag you down, will badger you, will cause you to be sick, will cause you to lose your faith. And God through Jesus Christ. What road are you on today? What are you yielding yourself to today? The external or the internal? That's where I'm going to stop today. I don't want to rush through this message because it is very important. So this is part one. Next week will be part two. But I'm going to speak to you straight on today. If you are 
involved in the external and you find yourself more and more and more drifting from God and yielding to this world. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray that you see the truth for what it is. And that God, through Jesus Christ, give you the strength through the Holy Spirit to repel that temptation and to get back in line, to get back and continue to walk through that narrow gate, through that, down that narrow road. If you want to do that today, or you want to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want to pray with you today. Yeah, to receive Christ, you must believe that Jesus Christ was sent by the Father, that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. He's got sitting at the right hand of God the Father, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. If you want to repent, turn from your sinfulness today. I want to lead you in a prayer. If today you are a Christian and you have been but put this way, yielding to the external, to the world, I want you to pray also and ask God to forgive you and help you to get back on the right path. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for the message today. I know that there are many out there that are yielding to this world. I'm talking about Christians yielding to this world. They need to repent today. And I want to pray for them today. And Father God, I want to pray for all those that are lost, that want to repent and receive Christ as their Savior and Lord. Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray for all the sinners today, and I'm praying to lead them in a prayer, a sincere prayer, to whereas they will repent. If you are a sinner and you want to come to Jesus Christ, please pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today. I have been convicted, and I want to repent and receive Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. I believe that he is the Messiah that is crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, and is now sitting at your right hand from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today. I surrender my life to him today. I pray that you save me. I pray that you renew me. And when I leave this life, that you take me to heaven to be with you forever. In Jesus' name I pray, and thank you for saving me today. For I believe that you have saved me today, and I have become a Christian. And let me pray for those that have been tempted by Satan and fallen. I'm praying for Christians right now. Father God, in Jesus' name. I have been unfaithful to you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Wash me and cleanse me in the blood of Jesus Christ. Forgive me and restore me and help me to fight temptation. Convict me through your Holy Spirit. And I believe that through my prayer today, my truthful prayer, that you have forgiven my sins and restored me back to where I belong. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen. I'd be loved if you prayed any one of them prayers. Please, let me hear from you. Email me at abundant.grace at att.net If you receive Christ as your Savior and Lord today, please go to a Bible preaching, teaching church Get an audience with the pastor, tell him what happened. Ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray for you, to pray with you. And ask him to baptize you by full immersion in water in the name of the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for being with us today. You can watch us on YouTube. You can watch us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, any of the main social media outlets. You can listen to us on our local radio stations here in Melodia, Texas. Or just Google me, Bishop Ramon Di Maria, or Abundant Grace Church of Melodia. Our message title has been The Enemy, External and Internal, from James chapter 4 and verse 4. This has been part one. Next week will be part two. Don't forget, let me hear from you. God bless you, my beloved, and go with God.